Hello, everybody, and welcome to Whitling's Prototype, episode number 59. Uh, we got our transition stuff kind of working. Doesn't look too shabby. Got our transition in happening, but now I think it's time to uh, play with the stack. <clears throat> I guess there's a couple things we need to do. Um, we've got our level, current level transitioning out. And then we need to transition into our new level. And this is going to pose a bit of a problem with our core level objects. Um, we might need to do some sort of memento design pattern or something. Because uh, when we load the new level... Well... I don't know, maybe each level just has its own core level objects. <laughs> Transition section. Uh, world scale transition editor. Edit section name, total duration. Let's also do a... Is this for each one? No, this is after each section. I probably want some sort of variable to let us know which scene we're supposed to go to, right? No, I think that would need to be done programmatically eventually. So we'll make a note here. But for now, um, we'll have a target dot scene. And I believe this is an object field. Game object true as game object. And then we need to make a scene thing in our world transition. <clears throat> uh, we can get rid of all of these actually. And this one too, I believe. Zoom in, update, you're gone. Initialize section directory, you're gone. I mean, dictionary. This is all gone. Nice. Love me. I love deleting code. <clears throat> and then we're going to need a scene here. Float. <clears throat> not sure if this should be a game object or not. Not sure. We'll give it a shot. And then we also need a scene load time. And we're going to make this a slider e g y l dot slider no Value, I want the label and then the value. Okay, I was right. <clears throat> and then in here, world scale transition. 
in update. When would we do this? In awake, perhaps? Yes, in awake. We'll do a load scene timer, and then down here. And if it's greater than zero, we will, oops, that was a caps lock. No, oh. come on, buddy. There we go. Uh, we're going to need to include scene management here. Load async, scene build index, just rename. Actually, I think this would be scene.name to string. Additive. And this is our levels. Oh, game object does not work. Sure, sure. Um, boom, boom. There we go. Happy days is scene one in my build settings. Level one, yes. <clears throat> and seed loan time will be 0.5. So at 1.5 seconds, we should get our level one in there. Whoa! Oh, that's right. There are two cube managers in the scene. Wait a moment, <clears throat> we didn't even, that automatically loaded. We should have loaded halfway through the transition. Every path node is looking for the cube managers to talk to them. <laughs>
we'll do an is transitioning here as well. Oh my, there we go. So you can see a couple things here. Um, <clears throat> our main cube got big, and it automatically snapped our camera to, did the background change? I believe it did. Yeah. Not quite what we want to happen, I believe. Oh dear. Sure, okay. Well, this is working nicely. Our selection is broken. Um, but I believe that's a cube manager thing. Or maybe it's also, oh. Oh, yeah, see, I'm still, spinning this, um, oh, that looks pretty trippy. Yeah, this is like reflecting. I guess it's because of the smoothness. I wonder... Let's go into our fade shader. Oh, I really shouldn't have. Um... I shouldn't have a condition in here, should I? Not a great plan to put a condition in your pixel shader. Ugh, this um, formatting is awful. That's okay. <clears throat> well, I'm I'm gonna ignore that little goofy bit there. Um, so when I load the scene, Oh wow, we've we've looped back around to the 9th of April. Woo, lad. Okay. Um, let's see. So I think now we have to think about prefabs versus scenes. Um, using a god prefab for a scene is a little bit cumbersome just because if we want to change what's in that scene, um, if we apply that prefab, then it's going to overwrite the links of all the child prefabs. So if I want to say update my death cube prefab somehow, um, if that death pre cube prefab is in a level prefab, that connection is now broken. So <clears throat> and we can load scenes additively but um, that means we have to deal with persistent objects. And I think this might be the route to go. So, um,
Yeah, I think this is what we'll do. So that means we'll only ever have one of each of these objects and we'll don't destroy on load them so that they go between scenes. Um, <clears throat> we'll also have one in each scene by default. And the way this will work <clears throat> is we have our basic core level objects in our, in our menu scene. And then we have our level scene with our core level objects as well. So <clears throat> when we load this level scene, this core level objects is going to say, hey, are there any more core level objects? And if there are, it means this scene was loaded into, so I can safely destroy myself. If there isn't one, then I'll just stick around and I will be the core level object from now on for the uh, duration of this playthrough. And then maybe what we can do is we're going to we're going to need some kind of function like begin level. And this is going to basically equal our awake. So instead of unity calling the awake function whenever this gets created, we're going to send a message that begin level happens and then the core level objects is going to, you know, find all the new cubes and bada bada ba. It's a pretty big change, I believe. Um, got our mouse controller. Cube selector, we don't really need the filter anymore. Ah, that means I'm going to have to connect the way that our menu works. Dang. Maybe not. Main menu input is different from all of our other inputs. Where does our cube manager live in level one? I believe that lives in core level objects, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, and this thing knows about the specific start node that we're supposed to go from. And that's a bit of a problem. Because if we have a core level objects that is sticking around interscene, is there anything else that is not connected? Cube manager needs the start node. We know that. Got some transforms, filters off, light and stuff. Don't really care about that. Debug touch input. OK. So the only thing that, th that we need to do dynamically is find the start node. Yeah, but the problem is in our menu, we're doing it differently. I mean, we could turn this on. What what just happened there? Okay, that's our second light. Uh, let's go into our cube manager and let's make a public uh, 
Uh, let's just set this default to true, actually. <clears throat> um, here's start. Um, do, 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 do. I believe we want to do events. And this way we can keep it all internalized like we've done before. Um, does that matter? Is anything going to change this? Maybe. And we've got a unity action, and this is going to be on start level delegate. What don't you like about this? Oh, right, Unity Action is just this. I was doing old style C sharp delegates. We might actually also want an on end level. Um, I don't know about that. And then we've got our private, we'll call this. Spawn cubes. Spawn cubes. I'll we'll just call this spawners. And this should go in the on start spawn cubes. Find our spawners. Find cubes. Oh, dang. <clears throat> oh, that's right. We can't actually rely on the order of execution of delegates. Dang. That's okay, we'll have to do this ourselves then. Um, spawn and find the cubes. Um, let's go to level one and make sure that it's still working, right? Cool. Okay. That makes me happy. Um, let's see. <laughs> Main menu. Got this bad boy here. Uh, we're going to need to create a utility function. <clears throat> I mean, class. Component. Hey. Um, I'll call this unique. Uh, 
Uh, let's turn. This is our menu. That looks correct. Um, Prefabs, core level objects, boom. Cannot spawn, so the start node is fine. Is this going to work? Ho! Start target of camera controller. Right, start target is the world. So this is going to need to be... Oh, you know what? Hey, these cubes are untagged. We can just tag this as the start, right? That's pretty cool. <clears throat> um, find start tag cube for camera setup on scene transition. I just do a hotkey to change my volume? Interesting. Um, main camera, why were you looking away, buddies? Where's my camera? Here over. Oh. I was thinking about this. Um, is there any reason for me to start the game, you know, on a level camera angle? Like, why not keep our angle down camera and then just rotate our cube? Oh boy. No, it's not the right way. Like so. Too many things, oh my goodness. Oh, that's why we had two main cameras, I believe. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And then the What? What is happening here, man? What the heck? What shader mode am I doing? Did I do something dumb there? Oh, 
Why would the direction of the camera change everything so drastically? Huh. What? It's that camera position, yo. Oh, I linked to the wrong camera here. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Yeah, okay. That doesn't look too bad. Now if I can just fix everything else. <laughs> uh, you know... I think all that work that I did for the custom menu input is borked. It's not what I want. Maybe 45 on the Y. Hmm. Why does that look so god awful? That really looks bad. What's going on here? Source alpha one minus source alpha. Render type transparent. Didn't change anything there. I have no idea what ignore projector does. Maybe it's that double light thing that's happening. Do I have more than one light in here? Only one. It's attached to the camera. Maybe that's why, because it's attached to the camera?
But even then, I had to move my play menu text to 0.5 away. Ah, uh, that's because my camera offset distance is pretty far. Okay. <clears throat> so that looks better. Um, let's try rotating it back again. So I believe that that was 45, 45, 0. Yeah, that looks awful. The color doesn't matter. I mean, that looks pretty cool. Although these are really out of whack now. What's this cube manager doing? You doing anything different, buddy? No. Um, where's our main menu input? Selected menu face, rotator, that's correct. World transition, debug, yeah, that's fine. So I have direction, and this is doing up, down, left, or right. So I think something is going to have to be different because um, with our cube in the level, remember, we are drawing, we're testing against these four lines. And I believe they are the four lines with the highest Y based on the camera up. And the camera up is just an extra game object that I've got in the world. Hmm.
camera offset direction. That didn't work. Uh, begin easing to target. Nope. Oh, geez. Can I? <laughs> it's funny. I can't actually access play or credits or options. All I can do is achievements and quit. Um... Yeah, see, that's the problem. I need to disable this in certain places and enable it in others. Oh. Whoa, I'm hitting left every time. Oh, dear. Whoa, that's not good. Okay, now right works every time. Left is not freaking out. Now it's broken. Now left is going backwards. What? Man, we are just trashing everything today. It's working fine in the level. It's happy about that. Huh. Right. Hmm. So there's a difference between our level and our menu. There's a lot of differences, actually. Um. I might, I'm definitely going to rename this episode. That's for darn sure. So we've got levels versus menu, main menu, um, versus in level menu. I mean, it would be super cool if all of my buttons were like that, you know, A, B, C, D, E, and then F in the back. <coughs> It's not a radial menu, it sort of looks like a radial menu, but I always thought of a radial menu as having, <clears throat> you know, not cardinal directions, it was just any one. But I guess it's still technically radial. It doesn't matter much. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure what to do. Let's try and figure out a plan of attack. What's the smallest thing I can test? What's the most important thing to test? Priorities. 
I need to So the goal right now is to load a level and transition smoothly. Uh, the big problem is that the main difference between levels and main menu is a, quite a lot. There's a lot of different stuff, but I also want them to share our core level objects. In menu input. So here I'm rotating ninety, 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 and We'll do a 45 here, 45 here. Okay. So with our main menu cube rotated like that, if I go up, so that would be W. Oh, hey, this works with keys as well. Okay, that makes me happy. Hey, So let's test W first. So we definitely don't want 90. Let's try 45, 45. Uh, let's set this to the correct orientation first. So this is 45, 45, and I want to rotate it 90 degrees on the, actually, let's pretend we're doing W. So that would be 90 on the X. That's what it was. Local rotation. I wonder if this is going to completely destroy everything. I believe it absolutely will. Let's test it out. Huh. Hmm. Okay, well, didn't seem to break too much on an initial test. Still not quite.
I think I need to apply this rotation to the cube's current rotation. No. And as always with quaternions, Why? What? Oh, this is main menu input. That's not what I think I want to rotate by. Dang it, what the heck fire? If I take my main menu cube and I rotate it positive 90 on the Y to 135, I'm just happy. But why? Why, 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 why? I think we're almost out of time already. Oh, that's okay. Um, if I can get this working and looking good, we will be set. Because this is the other thing that I need to prototype out. It's like, how are we going to move around the world? Um... Maybe get rid of this local rotation bit that I just did. I did miss one local rotation. Okay, so that actually did rotate at 90 degrees on the Y. Ah, okay, that's the problem. I'm rotating it in local space. That could be why. Man, this rotate like widget is friggin' awful. I do not like it. I'm gonna copy this. 
and then paste it just so I can see, you know, the starting where it's going to look like when it starts. Um, So it is doing exactly on the Y and the X. Okay. Let's try this again with all local rotations. I've got one more try, and then I think I'm going to call it a day. Main menu input. So I've got two options here. I can keep the camera pointing down at an angle like this and find some math magic to make sure that my um, cubes rotate the right way when looking directly at the camera. Or I could cheat more and spin the cube before rotating it. Um, Let's see, so I'm going to check to see if the direction has changed. Quaternion.identity, so if it has changed. Rotator.transform. Um, dot rotate. Negative 45, negative 45, 0. I'll tell it to begin rotate by the direction. Basically just undoing our crazy rotate to get it to face the camera. 
and then doing the calculations and pulling it, putting it back. Oof, oof, <laughs> that's even worse. I mean, it looks neat. That's all you can ask for sometimes. Let's go back to this local rotation. I don't like that. Am I over? Oh, I'm over, okay. Um, fix that, fix that, where was that? Cube rotator. Well, that's it for today. It seems like we broke everything, but sometimes that's what you got to do when you're making progress. We have discovered more issues to tackle. I think I'm going to rename this to something different than transition stack. We didn't even come close to approaching that. Um, so I'll sort of mull it over and we'll see where we get tomorrow.